Hey, look, it's Cindy Lucin. We haven't heard that name in a long time. I hope you're doing well, Cindy, if you're watching. Just heard on the radio, the Democrats plan to bolster support by registering a million new voters in Florida before the next presidential election. Felons' voting rights were reinstated last year. Should we be worried about Florida? Yes. Does the GOP have a similar plan? No. What are your thoughts, Bill? Uh, we were very close to electing a socialist governor in Florida last year. The opposition seems fierce. Um, the best thing you can do, uh, this is at least the experience that I would... Um, seems to be obvious to me is if you really want to get rid of if you really want to get rid of this socialist impulse in America the best way to do it is to bring about socialism just as fast as you can um, the the threat is always over the long term you know if it turned out that uh, if it turned out that I had a lever I could pull and and have um, AOC's entire agenda or Bernie's agenda put into place instantly, all of it. I'd make a pretty compelling argument that I would do that, that it'd be the right thing to do because you would simply watch the world stop. You would just watch everything stop. You know? Um, I wonder how much, uh, how much support there would be for socialism if, for example, they grounded all aircraft, except for, of course, congressmen who are very important and have to travel. But I, what, would, what do you think would happen if they actually said, we're grounding all air transportation in the United States forever. We're going to cut the planes up. We don't actually cut them up, but they're grounded. And they're not going to fly again because of the planet. How do you think the American people would respond to that? And what do you think um, the word socialist would mean if it was actually put into practice? And that's a lot of, uh, it goes not just to the air travel, you can make that argument for food or for anything else. The problem is it's got to happen relatively qu quickly. When I say relatively quickly, I mean in the space of two, three, four years, ten years, something like that. If you don't do it relatively qu quickly, you start having people born and growing up never remembering what um, capitalism was like and have nothing to compare it to. This is what happened in the Soviet Union. You had people who were born into this system um, who uh, who didn't know any better, never experienced anything else. So yes, I'm concerned about it. Um, and I, I don't know if it's going to be the next one or, or one um, uh, or one um, down the future, but I am going to talk about this idea that Nancy Pelosi wants 16 uh, year olds to vote. She wants them to vote because they're emotional and they don't have any, Dis discretion. They have no judgment. That's why they're still called minors. And I think we should be running with this idea. I think this is the kind of mistake, this, this is the kind of landmine that their policies force them to bring about. And I think that I should be running with this on a flag. Just absolutely say, okay, so the Democrats are saying that we should allow people who are still children to vote. That's the definition of children. It's the legal definition of, of children uh, as a minor. If you commit a crime before your 18th birthday, you get one set of um, punishments. And if you commit it after, you get another set of punishments. And it literally could be the difference between one minute. You commit a crime on 1159 on the night of your birthday, you're, you're a, a minor. And then a minute later, you're, you're now 18. Now you're not a minor. It's arbitrary rule and some levels doesn't make sense, but you got to draw that line somewhere. So that's where it's drawn. So... If I, I would just run on this, I'd say the Democrats want children to vote. And the reason they want children to vote is because the policies of the Democrats are childish policies. They're, they're wishful thinking, they're magical thinking, they're the policies of children. And I would further ask Nancy Pelosi, why stop at 16? Why not allow 12-year-olds to vote? What's the difference? We already know where the limit between adult and, and minor is, and it's at 18, which is where the current voting limit is. Um, so why not allow 10-year-olds to vote? And why is it that you want 10-year-olds or 16-year-olds to vote? What is it about them? What is it about young people? What is it about children? Because that's, again, the definition is 18. What is it about children voting that appeals to you as a member of your, of your party? I wouldn't want 
children to vote because I think that the world always works in the same way, and that's why you get a little experience first. You know, you you. This is why you. Um, this is why you, you you know this is why you you get twenty hours of dual instruction or whatever before you ever solo, and then you solo and build up some solo hours before you go cross country and flying and all this. You know, you you have to gain experience, and um, and the fact that the, the 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 point is is not whether or not it's going to happen. The, the the point which we're too stupid to make apparently is why would you want children to vote? Kulak 76 gets it. Yeah, I didn't get my finger quite on it there. He says it's because they're easy to manipulate. Absolutely right. So why not have six-year-olds or seven-year-olds voting? Because you can convince them of anything. You can convince them of the Easter Bunny and all the rest of it. When I was six or seven, I would hide underneath the cushions on the couch. Um, and, uh, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm a, well, maybe a little younger, five years old, let's say, and I'm hiding underneath the cushions on the couch. And if you've ever put a five-year-old under the couch cushions, you'll notice that they won't fit there. But my mom and dad, playing along, came in and said, you know, where's Billy? Is Billy, have you seen Billy? I have not, I haven't seen Billy anywhere. And I was utterly convinced I had them fooled, utterly convinced. When they would come into our room at night when my brother Steve and I were talking past bedtime and we'd hear those footsteps down the hall. And, and then the door would open and we'd be like this. <sighs> we were utterly convinced that we had them fooled because we're children. Children are wired to take in, in order to learn as much as you need to learn as a human child, children are wired to believe anything. They will believe anything. And as long as it's stated with authority, they'll believe anything. And of course, this would make um, the perfect democratic voter, a person who is incapable of judging the distance between uh, reality and, and fantasy, a person who's driven by emotions, untempered by uh, any sense of um, rationality or, or uh, self-control or self-discipline. That's the perfect democratic voter. Um, uh, I think, uh, why not go for four? Why, why would you stop at four? There's only one place you can stop between, and that's the line between children and adults, and that's 18. Uh, let's see here. Uh